Hello. Today I'm going to talk about a film that, uh, well, it's one I really love. Um, uh, it's also one of the first few R-rated movies I ever saw in my life. Um, that film is, of course, The Green Mile. Um, and uh, this film is written and directed and produced by Frank Darabond. Also based off of a <clears throat> a novel by Stephen King. It's one of the ones that is not really horror centric. You know, obviously people tend to think of uh, Stephen King as a horror writer, and obviously he has written many horror films or horror books that have been adapted into films, like Carrie and The Shining and uh, Christine Cujo, It. Um, uh, quite a bit of horror, um, or at least has some sort of horror twist in it if it's not straight up horror, but, um, this one is not, um, um, film revolves around, uh, Paul, um, Edgecombe, Edgecombe, Ed, Ed, Edgecombe, who, uh, is played by Tom Hanks, as well as, um, Dabs Greer. Got the cast listing there just to make sure I put a see their names and hopefully pronounce them properly. Um, uh, there's old Paul, and uh, you know the film is is being told by him through. Uh, uh, he's telling it to a friend of his in a retirement home, and uh, it's about uh how he, uh, you know, uh, was, a uh, he worked on death row at, uh, Coal My Mountain Penitentiary, and, uh, one day, a uh, man named John Coffey, played by Michael Clark Duncan, came and, uh, well, it turns out he's, uh, has quite a bit of powers. Uh, you know, he's able to help uh, Paul in this film. He, you know, at the beginning of the film, he uh, has a urinary infection and he's able to cure that. And then uh, the warden, played by James Cromwell, his wife has a tumor that can't be operated on. Um, again, this takes place in 19... Primarily in 1935. So, you know, back in those days, you know, there was only so much they could do with surgery. Um, even today, there still is, but, you know, it's more advanced in that perhaps back then, certain areas that would not have been able to be operated on uh, today, very likely they actually would be, so uh, obviously that's good. Um, this uh, film is one that I've uh, I love to rewatch quite a bit, though this is a three hour film, it's three hours and eight minutes, so to anybody who has never seen this film, just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, the back here, you have John Coffey, prisoner of supernatural powers, brings a sense of spirit and humanity to his guards and fellow inmates. Uh, Tom Hanks leads a stellar cast, including Michael Clark Duncan as John Coffey. It's uplifting story of guards and captives, husbands, wives, prisoners, a mouse named Mr. Jingles, and on another level, a uh, mover maker and his source. Uh, Yeah, a lot of people have seen this already, um, but if you haven't, um, yeah, Michael Clark Duncan's character, John Coffey, he's accused of uh, murdering and raping uh, two girls, and uh, we will see what actually uh, occurred, whether he did it or not, and uh, there's, that cast also has, you know, 
Michael, Michael Jeter, uh, David Morris, Bonnie Hunt, Tom Hanks' wife, um, <clears throat> Graham Greene, who plays a prisoner who, you know, he's only at the very beginning of the film, and uh, like spoilers, but he is the first person we see electrocuted. Uh, Doug Hutchinson, Sam Rockwell, who plays a prisoner named Wild Bill. <laughs> He's quite insane. Barry Pepper, Jeffrey uh, Dumon, Dumon. Uh, both of them, those two play uh, 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 guards with uh, Tom Hanks, as does David Morse. And uh, Doug Hutchinson, he also played a uh, guard, but nobody really likes him because he's just a big jerk and he has connections because, you know, he's the aunt or he's the nephew of the uh, governor's wife. So, you know, that's his aunt and he goes and tells her about certain things. Like if things are going the way he likes, he get, he goes and tells and then the warden hears about it. Um, Patricia Clarkson and Harry Dean Stanton are in this film also. Um, yeah, this is, uh, you know, and Gary Sinise, he's not listed on the back, but he's in one scene. He plays John Coffey's lawyer when Paul goes to talk to him about whether or not, you know, John Coffey ever had anything in his past about... Uh, killing anybody before he killed these, you know, apparently killed these two girls. Um, and nothing was found. This film, uh, was nominated for four Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Supporting Actor for Michael Clark Duncan, uh, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Sound. Um, I do think of all the films that were up for Best Picture, this should have won. Best Picture, and it's a shame that uh, Darabont wasn't nominated for Best Director because he should have been nominated and won for that as well as for adapting uh, this, the book. And Michael Clark Duncan also should have won an Academy Award. Um, I think a score could have been uh, nominated. Um, probably some other technical stuff like possibly uh, editing. But yeah, this is a very well-made film. Uh, again, I saw this when I was actually quite young. It's one of the first r films I ever saw. Um, and um, it's interesting that uh, Frank Darabont seems to be the one who was able to really adapt Stephen King's material. Probably the best out of everybody. Um, people know that he, Stephen King did not like the Shining by Kubrick, even though people think uh, The Shining is excellent. Um, but, you know, Frank Darabont is very faithful, you know, and while there might be certain differences in some cases, uh, uh, perhaps with the, depending on the kind of film or the, that he's making from the story or from the, like, you know, from the source material, you know, he will make the necessary changes needed to fit for the uh, screen. Because one thing about Stephen King is whether you've read his books or not, but you might have heard quite a bit about uh, many of them. Um, uh, a good portion of all of his books is like, you know, in a way you couldn't really do them justice if you ever made a film or anything. Good. Like some of them are just... You know, they're unfilmable in the sense like you wouldn't be able to truly capture the source properly, you know. In some cases like this and Shawshank, you know, it's done excellently. Plus, you know, you know, those two films are fairly, you know, this film is, you know, fairly grounded in many ways. So, you know, some stuff is sort of like 
could be seen as very much reality bent to some extent. Um, you know, having certain, and obviously, you know, John Coffey has supernatural abilities and powers, so there is some of that stuff here, but it's um, <clears throat> used quite sparingly here and there. Um, which is good. Um, and plus, it's no more than necessary, and um, from what I've uh, gathered from the book, which I have not read, but I've heard quite a bit. This is like a, a multiple like volumes before they made it into an actual book, as I recall. Sort of like, oh, yeah, the word is eluding me. I can see right here. What is it? Oh. Yeah, six volumes. Uh, yeah, it was released in multiple vo six volumes, and then it was just uh, yeah from March to August of nineteen ninety six is when uh, this came out. Before eventually deciding that you know they put it out as one book. Um, but yeah, this is a a film that is uh, <clears throat> has been very highly praised and uh, deservingly so. Um, Tom Hanks gives one of his best performances. Um, I think he probably should have been nominated for an Academy Award also, but um, Michael Clark Duncan deserved his nomination. Should have won, but went to Michael Caine. For uh, Cider House Rules, which Cider House Rules, yeah, uh, not a bad film or performance, but you know this this performance by Duncan was and is just better in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> I, I've heard how some people were like, you know, they kind of voted for him because when he won his first Michael Caine won his first Academy Award. You know, he was filming Jaws of Revenge, and so he couldn't show up <laughs> at the ceremony to get his Oscar. So they're like, you know, we know he's going to be there this time, so let's vote for him so we can actually give an actual speech and not just have the presenter just accept it for him and then just walk off stage. So um, I've heard people say that. Um, you know, uh, I'm not sure... Um, whether or not that's completely valid at all, but that'd be kind of funny and interesting if uh, <laughs> that is why he won. It's like, well, you didn't get to say anything the first time, so uh, we'll just give it to him again, and hopefully he'll, <laughs> he will show up and we'll have something to say. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, I was about five, uh, five or so when I, this, when I finally saw this, because it came out, when I was five in 1999. So this film's also uh, 25 years old. Same with uh, uh, The Phantom Menace, which I talked about last week. And uh, at yeah, December 1999. So, um, you know, it came out on VHS and DVD as well as was on TV in 2000 and I saw it before I turned six so yeah this was a <clears throat> very good film um, um, again I saw it with my mom she was there and, and I'm pretty sure she saw it beforehand so me watching it with her wasn't that wasn't that big of a deal um, but yeah, this was a very good film. Um, there's the mouse, Mr. Jingles. Yeah. Gonna go in the circus, <laughs> mouse circus and everything. And just a very good film. Um. 
so, you know, if uh, for whatever reason you're not super into Stephen King uh, stuff, like films and adaptations, you know, films like this are really good. Uh, Shawshank Redemption is also good, basically, but some of the films that uh, Frank Darabont has made of uh, Stephen King material, they're good. Um, he also did The Mist. Um, Stand By Me is also one that was made. Uh, not by Darabont, but that's another uh, adaptation of a Stephen King uh, book. Um, that's directed by Rob Reiner, and Reiner also made uh, Misery, which has horror elements to it, so there you go. Um, yeah. That's really all I have to say. I know I was kind of like, summarize the plot a bit, and then talk about some of the other Stephen King stuff. I mostly try to focus on Darabont, because he's an excellent writer and director and uh he is truly somebody who uh is excellent at what he does he is an, an excellent filmmaker and storyteller and uh i really just enjoy whatever he makes um <clears throat> he is one of the best and uh yeah that's all i really have to say there's nothing more to say uh this is an excellent film in terms of accolades, should have won everything that it was up for, and no doubt more, especially at least Darabont for direction. Actually, shocking he was never nominated for director at any point for this or Shawshank. Oh well, and Academy uh, has gotten it wrong quite a bit, as everybody knows. Sometimes they get it right. Most of the times, not so much, but uh, everybody seems to accept that and, uh, you know, yeah. But hey, at least this was acknowledged. Some films don't get acknowledged at all, so there's that. Um, anyway, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you've had a great week. Hope you'll have a... Uh, great rest of your day and i hope you'll have a great weekend as well so i'll uh, see you all next time take care bye